Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Over and I am um, an artist and illustrator based in Southern California who has also been studying tarot, astrology, and numerology since around 2010. Um, I naturally became drawn to it um, because of the just so many fantastic interpretations by artists over the centuries of the subject of tarot. Um, the illustration work is just, um, I mean, by now in 2020, there are just hundreds and if not thousands of tarot decks out there. And um, I just wanted to make this video today prompted by my friends at Sacred Infinite, who I'm so honored to have my own personal deck being um, featured on their website, which I made over the last couple of years called Earth Star and Astro Botanical Tarot. This is the book, and then here's the little deck. It's a square format right now. Um, although I'm already working on a second edition, so there's a very limited number of these left if you're interested in. Uh, grabbing a copy, just have to plug that. Um, but yeah, I, I decided to to really take my knowledge and understanding of Tarot to the next level and make my own deck over the last couple of years. And um, so this video today, they suggested for me to maybe give some tips on how to read Tarot if it's something that you're you're new to, or even if you do already. I think that um, I mean I think one of the things that's great about Tarot is that everyone has their own way of reading. And I firmly believe that, this is my first pointer, everyone can read, everyone and anyone can read tarot. There can be maybe some misconception out there that you might have to have some, either A, some sort of extra psychic ability to read tarot, um, or B, be extremely knowledgeable, like have studied and studied on the meanings of the cards and the history of the tarot. And neither one of those is true, although either can, can help. <laughs> um, potentially, but I've, I, what I, one, one of the things that I love about tarot is that it can be completely accessible to anybody. I personally think the way we read tarot is the same way that we interpret everything around us in our daily life. The way we look at a painting or the way we um, think about what we're seeing looking out the window um, or um, the way we process something that we might encounter in our daily travels, you know, in a conversation or something we come across in our neighborhood, um, and, and the meanings that we associate with with these things, with the people, with the words, the images, the symbols, we're constantly, you know, humans are meaning-making machines. <laughs> we find meaning in everything. Um, but the tarot, it's a nice tool to be able to really um, set aside some time and go a little bit deeper and be a little bit more intentional and focused on interpreting um, this the symbolism that we that we find in the cards that we pull. So I guess that my my first tip would be when you're delving into this world to pick a pick a deck that you just really love the imagery of that you feel a personal connection to and you feel excited and inspired by. Um, there's some old rules I've heard in the past about like if you you can't buy your own tarot deck, you need to have it given to you by someone, and rules about how to store it, like you need to keep it in a box or in a special type of cloth, or you need to cleanse it or recharge it in the sun or with crystals. And I mean, those things definitely can't hurt, but I don't think that they're necessary. Um, but what is important maybe about those sorts of of more ritual like behaviors is that they they help encourage in you a mindset of taking it seriously of respecting it and um, again being more intentional around it and thinking of it as a semi I mean sacred is kind of a strong word although um, it is I do think of it that way uh, because you're connecting with a deeper part either of your own consciousness or with with spirit, depending on how you look at it. It's really up to you. It doesn't have to be a spiritual experience. It can be a completely psychological experience. Um, but either way, I think these sorts of preparations can help put you in the mode of, again, being a little more intentional focused and taking it seriously and, and then maybe getting a little more out of it. So once you have your deck, I think, I think ideally, 
I mean, it doesn't always work out this way, but I think ideally you want to get as relaxed as possible. You want to be in an environment that's peaceful to you, it's not distracting, that's not making you feel self-conscious. The key is to be able to be relaxed and get your brain waves down out of the beta brain waves, which is when we're conscious and we're talking and we're like hyper alert, down into alpha brain waves, which is the, the brain waves we get into when we're daydreaming when we're driving from one location to another and we just zone out and we don't even realize that we're driving until we get to our location. Does that ever happen? Does that ever happen to you? If we're just basically in alpha brain waves, which is the earliest stage of being basically in hypnosis. So when we can get our brain into that level of wavelength, we can start to access more information that's normally not available to us in the subconscious mind. So a lot of things can help us get into alpha brain waves like Again, your environment, like maybe dimming the light, maybe having a candle or something to stare at to focus on that sort of relaxes you. You could have um, certain sounds or music playing in the background, just all possible suggestions. None of it's necessary again, but maybe being out in nature, just whatever makes you feel at the most, um, the most at ease uh, is the best environment for you to be in. Um, and then you can start, like I've been shuffling actually this whole time. Um, I, I think shuffling, just the sound of it and the feeling of it also helps you get into a relaxed state. There's something kind of calming about it. Rhythmic, any rhythmic sounds, like I heard drumming, the sounds of drumming can, are, are um, it's one of the kinds of sounds that can most quickly put people into a state of hypnosis. So interesting, it's something just so um, that hits strikes such a deep chord in us with drumming. It's like our heart beating. It's very physical. Um, and then taking deep breaths and taking slow breaths also can help us become more um, in a tranquil state. And then the next the next key is I mean you can always just pick a card randomly without thinking about anything in particular and do an interpretation of that. But I always get personally find that I get more out of a reading when I have a sp very specific question or topic on my mind. You know, the more specific you can be um, before you pull a card and, and hold that question, you might even want to write it out, hold it in your mind, maybe repeat it a few times, um, and although I like to sometimes, in the, you know, just as a daily practice, ask the question that's sort of general, which is, you know, what's the highest potential for me today? What's, what's the, either the highest potential for me or what's the lesson to focus on for today? What do I most need to reflect upon for this day? What are like the highest potential? So I kind of repeat it in my mind a few times while I'm shuffling and then I just, when I'm going to actually pick one, I'll sort of spread the cards out either in my hands or on a surface and I don't think about it. I think the key is to just go with your gut, let your body lead you in pooling a card, picking a card, whichever one just kind of magnetizes your eye or your hand to it the first, I just go right to that and don't let your mind get in the way. The logical mind can interfere with this process. So you really wanna try to keep that at bay while you're doing tarot reading, I think, personally. So, I just pulled the three of earth and in my deck, you know, it's sort of collage like there are a lot of different components. There's text. There's usually going to be a combination of texts, words, you know, numbers, symbols and pictures. And so what I do is I recommend to just kind of loosely gaze at it and let your eye be drawn to something in particular that stands out to you the most and start that's a good starting place we are naturally going to go around and look at everything but again just kind of trust your body like where your eye gravitates toward uh, to to start there and what i and you know i'm looking right at the crystals right now um so what i do then is i think well well what do i already know about this in this case this image what do i associate with it and um, I think I, I associate crystals the most with um, 
being outside in nature, being um, maybe on the beach, finding rocks, finding stones. I've always loved to do that as a kid. Being out in the natural world and kind of getting grounded. Um, maybe having my shoes off, like letting my feet actually touch the earth. <laughs> um, I see how they're linked. I'm noticing they're, I'm noticing the colors, which are green and brown. So definitely is kind of making me think of being outside and maybe working in the garden, working with plants, getting my hands dirty. And I'm noticing the way that the, uh, um, that they fit in together tightly. Um, and then that's kind of leading me to the number three. And I'm thinking about, so this is very stream of consciousness. I'm making connections. I'm letting one thing let, um, make me think of another thing. So the three, the way these are fitting tightly together, and I'm noticing the number three, is making me think of three's company. That phrase three's company. And I, I happen to know from studying numerology that three is associated with, with um, friendship and being social and communication. So now I'm thinking about also um, the importance today of maybe making sure I mix, not just think about communicating and maybe not even just writing, but maybe like making a physical, because the um, crystal symbolize the earth and our physical body, I'm thinking about maybe it, it's a good day to make a physical connection with somebody and actually see some friends in person. That could be another good thing for me to do today, if possible. Um, and then I'm, I'm thinking of, then I'm kind of letting myself go back to uh, more imagery that I'm being drawn to and I'm looking at the ginger <laughs> and <clears throat> I'm, and I'm really noticing the color here, this kind of peachy orangey color. And I'm thinking about what I know about the color symbolism. And I know that yellow and orange symbolize the sort of like, um, a life force, vitality, and creativity, and yellow can symbolize joy, um, and orange can be artistic work. So I'm also thinking about that this is about um, getting engaged in the material process of making creative work today, and feeling enlivened and rejuvenated by it, and feeling excited about it, and like kind of getting into that flow. Um, ginger is kind of spicy, you know, so like adding spice to my life through creative projects and um, And then I'm bouncing back to these coins and I'm think and I'm seeing how they're built being built like um, Like building blocks not coins. I'm sorry crystals and I'm thinking of yeah This could be a day where I really I really have a sense of building something and making progress and headway Not just enjoying the process, but also getting some results again because earth I'm bouncing back to earth is material solid um, effects and results today. So it's maybe not just a day to have fun, but to really make some headway on some physical projects. And again, thinking about how do other people tie into that with the three um, and maybe meetings or, or taking, just making sure I don't work too hard, but also um, mix in some play because three, I also know is symbolic of, um, lightheartedness and doing multiple things at one time, kind of multitasking, so taking breaks, having diversions, not getting so sucked into something that you're, um, you're just tooting out like everything else, the whole rest of the world and, um, and maybe <clears throat> burning yourself out a little bit. So I'm thinking, okay, I, I kind of can't. So basically what I'm doing is I'm starting with one image, I'm making associations with it. Then I'm moving to another one and thinking about how do they, how do they relate to each other? And I'm kind of forming a story here. I'm kind of picturing a story in my mind. Um, a story is kind of being woven as I go back to, to the first one and then to another and then back to one that came before and then to another and sort of weaving them all together. Like thinking how do these pieces all fit together to create a picture and a story here by what I associate with them. And then, oh, and then I noticed the word down at the bottom, mastery. So, so then it kind of makes me think, well, this is interesting because I'm doing this video. Um, you know, it makes me think of that phrase that you don't really master something until you teach it to somebody else. You know, when you finally get to a point where you're sharing your knowledge, sharing what you've learned with other people, um, 
that's when you start to think of yourself or that's when you can really start to step into the next level of of mastering that subject um, you know it's not till we share it back with others again three that we gain like a new sort of a new level of perspective and understanding on it so I feel like this word mastery is actually relating to me doing this video today which I've never done really done um, I've really never done any sort of teaching videos before this this is my first time so that's really interesting um, and then if you know anything about astrology in my deck up here we have um, now I'm just kind of going around to any symbols that I might have missed that my eye wasn't drawn to right away but making sure I don't don't leave anything out that could have a message so um, I already talked about the earth which is what this this is the alchemical alchemical symbol for earth up here um, but this is the middle 10 degrees of the zodiac sign Capricorn that this card is linked to and um, in my deck each card is linked to a specific 10 degree segment of the 360 degree zodiac wheel so um, I know that right now in Capricorn I think the planet Jupiter is up in this little section and that's also a planet associated with teaching and good fortune and luck and expanding so um, the idea of expansion is similar to the number three in this card of Not only socializing and expanding expanding socially and mentally in our communications but getting out traveling moving around um, experiencing a wider circle of the world um, that's Jupiter so I think that it's kind of reiterating the importance of connections with others and then sharing not only connecting but sharing what, what we know and what we've learned with others today um, and then re therefore reinforcing our own understanding of it in our mind and helping us to become more clear about it and confident in our knowledge and our wisdom and um, also being open to learning from other people too like being curious and asking questions is definitely associated with three so this is I'm sort of just giving you an example of my mental process here um, as I interpret this card and um, you know then another thing that I would just add in is if you ask a question, I mean, I oftentimes will only just pull one card because as you can see, um, you can go really deep into one card and you can really dwell and reflect upon it um, for a long time. Um, when you're first starting out, I think that's a good way to go. But if you have asked a question and you don't feel like you've gotten a complete answer, or you still feel a little bit uncertain about its meaning, definitely go ahead and pull another kind of what I oftentimes would be called a clarifying card. Um, you know and then now what's so great is that how I interpreted those symbols on that tarot card other people would have interpreted in a completely different way based on what they associated with crystals what they associate with the colors green yellow and orange what the number three might mean to them what what comes to mind for them when they think of, of earth you know somebody else might have thought about um, just mother nature in general, the planet, like environmental issues that are going on that maybe they're interested in getting involved in. Or um, maybe for them, Earth would have been that they're, you know, they've been thinking about starting a business of growing their own um, vegetables or herbs or uh, the, the ginger to them might have made them think about um, just like a recipe that they want to make for somebody or for or uh, for a family or the upcoming holidays you know or um, maybe something from childhood that they remembered that they used to have at home and then that could have led them off down a different pathway of images and memories um, so definitely allow your mind to wander and daydream again and go down those paths of associations and I feel like um, that one thing leading to another will often go de go deeper and deeper into your memories and your subconscious mind for what what needs to come out for you to reflect upon consciously um, and so I hope that that's some helpful you know it's not necessarily a how-to I think of it more just as tips advice in getting started and just be relaxed about it have fun um, and enjoy the process and be confident and trust your instinct trust your first impulses and don't get too in your, your head, into your mental, logical brain. 
because it's really a design to work with your intuitive right brain, I feel, in general. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, please feel free to contact me with feedback or questions or if you would like a personal reading of through tarot or astrology or numerology. Um, I would love to connect with you more and you can feel free to check out um, uh, my YouTube channel if you're watching this on Sacred Infinites. And please look at Sacred Infinites if you're looking at this on my channel and check out their beautiful website and products. It's a perfect time uh, to look over there for gift ideas. And thank you again to Sacred Infinite for inspiring this video and having confidence in me and supporting me as an artist and an um, astrologer and tarot reader. And so thank you again for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful week um, wherever you are and when, whenever you are. And I'll, I'll uh, hopefully connect with you more soon. Thanks so much. Bye for now.